um, to film all this in the same room. <laughs> you know Stay what? Tuned. Let's give you. Is this is this up here? This is the this oh. is the scene right now. We need to show yeah. you the behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh, much better lighting. Yes, Ooh. it is. Yeah. Okay, so we're working back here. We've got we found this room um, earlier today because we had nowhere to go and we were gonna just work it out because yeah, we I'm just you know it's raining a little bit of rain but nothing big 8 p.m last night they told us that we no longer had the event space mm -hmm. so what do we do we were we up till one trying to find chairs for a banquet center driving around downtown charleston trying to find a regis we work suite we did everything we could to make it happen in person but you've got us virtually as they get their work done. I'm trying to see if there's any questions. Are we ready? Mm-hmm. Hey everyone, I just want to thank, say thank you again for bearing with us. I know we've said this, but literally the venue canceled on us last night at 8 p.m. There was no one to get in touch with, so we have just been trying to pivot all day. And you've gotten a little bit of behind the scenes. And if you ever wanted a lesson in imperfect action, then then here you go. Um, I can't wait to introduce our next guest, Heather Bird. <laughs> Heather and I were sorority sisters together at the University of Georgia, so we really go way back. Um, Heather is a, she likes to call herself a, a recovering, <laughs> recovering, a recovering achiever. achiever. <laughs> yes, so she's a burned out boutique owner who has completely yes. pivoted her career after 15 years uh, running two, two successful boutiques. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two successful, successful boutiques in the Savannah, Georgia area. She pivoted her business and stepped into a higher calling. You can find her online at heatherkburge.com. She um, is a relationship marketing guru and i wanted to have her here for a couple of reasons um if you're selling to your sphere you are relationship marketing so her presentation is going to be so incredibly impactful but i also want you to have the opportunity to connect with her we've talked so much about social media today but heather actually did a one-year experiment where she shifted her business entirely off of social media she shut all of her social media down last year and ran her business without it so if you're looking to grow your business without social media, Heather is definitely somebody to connect with. So I'm going to turn it over to Heather. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Victoria. I'm seriously so excited to be here. And I'm going to do a little fun trick since our background is maybe, again, not the prettiest. I'm going to, if you guys don't know this, on Zoom, you can blur your background. So if you've got kids in the background or a lot going on, <laughs> you can make it look a little bit prettier by putting the focus on you. So that's a little my first little pro tip. So let me make sure my slides are all queued up, ready to go. Should be right, guys. Let me see. Or do I, let me see, share my screen. Uh, there we go. All right, let me see. Sure, I think it should be good. Are we good? Yeah, we see. Okay, awesome. So thank you for that awesome introduction, Victoria. It's just really crazy because I think our story and the fact that we've known each other for 25 years and have had this long-standing relationship has really culminated over this last summer. So you got to hear Victoria's inspiring story. And she just became actually a customer of mine in which reconnected us. And she, you know, basically a lot of things I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today that's how she found me and that's how and why she connected with me and now what a blessing that i get to share it with all of you guys so i'm going to dive in because um, in addition to everything you're going to see on the screen i am a fast talker and a talker so how in the world i'm going to keep this to 20 minutes y'all say a prayer for me and i know that if you're tuning in live you might be expecting to see the fabulous phil stringer who is going to be coming up after me sharing his ai magic with us today but trust me i'm hopefully going to equip you with some really great things as well so instead of just sharing about all of these bullet points i want to share a little bit of a story with you so five years ago i was as victoria mentioned i had a boutique um two boutiques actually shortly prior to that and by all intents and purposes from the outside looking in it was uber successful i had a million dollars in gross revenue um i was best boutique best bridal store for years in savannah georgia 
But I was only paying myself like $2,000 a month because as a small business owner, especially one with the overhead involved in like a brick and mortar business, I was the last person to get paid. So at that point, five years ago, I was thankful that I had added an additional revenue stream. We all learned from Tina, the power of incorporating additional revenue streams. And that was becoming an artist with Saint Beauty, just by sharing a, a product that I was already obsessed with, with pretty much everybody I knew. And so because I was coming from a place of genuine sharing, genuine connection, and kind of leveraging some of the relationships that I had built over the years, I was able to build an awesome business through that. But I had this difficult decision to make. And I had coffee with a friend and a mentor who I remember sharing all this, you know, strategic business info saying I needed to kind of reduce my staff and I needed to take over half of the things that, um, you know, I was, I was delegating at the time. And I just remember feeling in that moment that I value people so much more than I value even profit in the business and profit is important. I just recently did a podcast episode on my called sleep podcast, talking about the importance of profit, but I value people over profit. And so when I really thought about it, I was like, you know what? I really feel like I have more of an opportunity in the business model of network marketing to be able to impact so many more, to lean into my gifts and skill sets and to not be tied down to that, you know, that kind of traditional brick and mortar style business. And so I made the difficult decision to sell my business. Um, it was of course bittersweet, but it turned out to be one of the best business decisions I ever made because now uh, not only am Am I a top leader within uh, St. Beauty? I also am the host of the Called to Lead podcast, where I help network marketers grow their business by choosing faith over fear, leveraging simple systems, and doing it without having to be a slave to social media. So that's, that's my story kind of in a nutshell and what brings me here today to share some goodness with you. So I'm here to talk about relationship marketing, and it's something that I'm very, very passionate about. And Victoria mentioned that I spent an entire year off of social media, and yet I grew my business to actually the top six of our company of about 30,000 and a team of about 4,200 or so that does about 22 million in revenue on track this year. And so I've built a big business, grown that significantly, even despite not being on social media. So I have a question for you. How many of you guys feel like? You have to grow this massive following, whether it's on social media or this extensive connection base. I've got people <laughs> raising their hands, right? And you just heard some amazing examples of people who've done just that, right? It doesn't mean that you can't do that or that you shouldn't even try to do that. But I'm here to tell you that you don't have to grow a huge network in order to build a big business. And I think that's my biggest message I want to drive home today. So I want to be able to equip you. You've gotten the inspiration from so many people and so many of the awesome stories so far. I want to equip you with the how and whether you choose to do that online, on social media or off social media, this the principle is really the same, that it starts with the power of people. And specifically, it starts with the power of one person, just one. Okay. So I want to kind of exemplify this. And as I was getting ready to prep for this, uh, this chat, I was at my business networking BNI. Many of you guys are probably are familiar with that. Um, I was vice president of our chapter, just transitioned out of that leadership role to focus on some other fun, exciting things that are coming up in the future with my business. But I had a conversation with a realtor that was visiting our chapter and I kind of shared, oh, this is great. I'm going to be, you've got to come to this online. Uh, well, at the time it was in person. You've got to come to this conference in Charleston um, because I'm going to be sharing about relationship marketing. And she said, well, I have a fun fact for you. Do you know that for every one customer that you brought, bring on as a realtor, that then in turn can bring you 10 customers over the life of your business on average? And I'm sure it's even more. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is fitting in exactly with what I want to talk about today. And I realized in my own personal business, this is exactly what I have experienced as well. So instead of thinking of the masses, I want you to think of the one. So, and this is backed up by statistics, actually. I did a little bit of research because I know probably not everybody on here is a realtor, but I know a lot of you guys are. And the National Association of Realtors, I did some statistical data because I can't remember who it was that said she's a data girl. Me too, all day long. <laughs> so, woo! And um, one of the things that I learned was that over 50% of your business as a realtor is going to come from repeat business, 
and referrals, whereas less than 5% on average is going to come from social media. So again, doesn't mean you can't or shouldn't be on social media, or if you're gifted in that, and I'm going to share some thoughts on that as well. But what I'm here to tell you is that there's proven power when you can nurture the relationships and the connection with one person to then 10x that into, uh, you know, gosh, as big as you want to grow this thing, okay? So how are we going to do this? We're going to talk through the keys to relationship marketing by talking about five C's. I love me some, you know, alliteration and acronyms. I'm sure you guys do too. And hopefully this will make it a little bit easy. And I definitely encourage you to take notes because I am going to be bringing tons of tactical tools that I have used to really exemplify this. And again, that kind of connected Victoria and I on this journey that allowed me to be here to share with you today. So the first C that we're going to talk about is not a new word for you guys today, if you've been tuning in, and that is curiosity. And this is, um, and I'd love to know in the chat if you guys do a word of the year, because it's something I've done for the last probably eight Eight years and technically my word of this year of 2023 is freedom but I also like to do a word of a season if I ever feel inspired or you know if I'm kind of in a shift moment and my word for this season is curiosity and so I want to start here because it's important to really get curious about what it is that you want I know you're feeling inspired today and you're probably overwhelmed with a million and one ways that you want to implement it in your business but if you don't have clarity kind of like Tina talked about first thing this morning if you don't have clarity in where you want to be, you're never going to feel empowered to actually do the hard work because it is hard work, right? To grow this business that it's going to take so that you can not just bring fulfillment and impact to yourself and to your family, but even better impact so many other people through serving them. So I'm going to be sharing with each of these seeds some implementation ideas with you. And before we get there, I forgot I snuck in this little quick. Okay. So any James Clear fans out there, let me know in the comments. Yes, Tina is. No shock there, right? He has an awesome book called Atomic Habits that pretty much every single one of you needs to read. It's one of two books that I'm going to share today that need to go on your Audible list ASAP, okay? But this quote is actually from his 321 email series that he you can get for free delivered right to your inbox. And y'all, I know we have a ton of, you know, email sitting in our inbox right now, but this is one that I actually keep unread and I read it every single week because it's fast and has made such an impact to me. And this quote here, which is really, I won't necessarily read it to you guys because I'm sure you probably are reading it as I'm talking, but really what he's talking about here is that big things take time. Again, Tina touched on this this morning that you probably want to be where she is in her business, or you want to be where some of the amazing ladies and gentlemen that are sharing where they are in their business, but it is going to take time and it is a long game. So let's dive into some implementation. And we're going to start with the first step, which is starting with yourself. So you're going to want to you know, paint that picture of where you want to be in your business and what you specifically, how you want that to look for your life. And also, so you're going to want to begin with the end in mind, but you're also going to want to go back to why you started back to the very beginning, because a big part of measuring where you want to go in the future is also being grateful for how far you've come and tapping into that why that made you make that big decision to take the leap in the first place. So the other book I was going to tell you about that is a huge one, and it's kind of a newer one, so a lot of people aren't familiar with it, but it's called The Gap and the Gain, where it talks about basically measuring where you are right now from where you started in your business versus where, measuring where you are right now to where you want to be in the business. And you want to live in the that um, in the gain, not in the gap. And that applies not just to business. It also can be a really powerful principle for you to even take back to your family. So definitely dive into that book and get really, really intentional about why you started and where you want to go. And my favorite way to do that, actually brought this one in person to show you guys, is using the tools from Cultivate What Matters. Um, I have used their power sheets for about mm, seven or eight years now. Um, I just shipped it over into their Fresh Start Daily Planner. And this has everything from my day, everything that I'm basically going to talk to you guys about is all listed out in this one little book. And so I carry it everywhere with me. And at the very beginning of this one, it has that opportunity to do exactly what I the step one, which is to get curious about what it is that you want and how far you've come. Okay. So that's step one. 
Step two, and I think somebody else kind of touched on this a little bit earlier today, but it's something that I've done in my business and it is very powerful. And that is doing a simple survey for your existing customers, for your existing following, your email list. I'm big in text marketing. I do also do email, but um, you can text or email or you can drop it on social media as well. A survey, I love JotForm because it's free for a certain number of submissions and it's worth every penny if you need to uh, you know, invest in that if you're going to have a big number of responses. But you can essentially ask questions and get really curious about what it is that your customers or your potential customers are looking for, um, you know, what, what they, their dreams are, what, um, you know, how you can best serve them, the problems they might be having, maybe what's held them back from working with you in the past or from purchasing your product. And this is a really powerful way for you to gain that insight and curiosity, but also you can get feedback for content for if you are on social media or doing blog posts or podcasts or anything like that. So that's my step two. The next one is interviewing five of your ideal customers. So I did this when I started my podcast and I took the time to have a 15 minute Zoom call with people that I knew were my avatar, as you've heard. And I recorded it and I transcribed it using an app called Descript that is, has been probably, well, boards, I can't remember who said it earlier, that that is a must have, that's not on my list. But Descript is a, is a, those two I would say are the two things I used pretty much daily. But I transcribed the calls, which allowed me to literally get the words and the dreams and the fears and the goals of what my avatar is going through, which equips you for so many amazing things to be able to leverage in your business. So get curious. That's the first C. So the second C is connection. And I, again, did another podcast about this really recently where I talked about that things like automations can be a really amazing tool to build your business, but they really should be used as a system to kind of prompt you to do the connections. And so you want to look for opportunities in your daily habits and rhythms to create that connection. And here's a few ways that I implement this in my business that you can hopefully emulate if you choose as well. So the first one is create a daily method of operation or DMO, as you might have heard before. And you'll hear sometimes, especially in network marketing, it's like make this, you know, huge massive list and send a, you know, million messages out, which can feel so overwhelming, can sometimes feel honestly a little icky. And I'm not going to say it hasn't worked for people, but I prefer to go back to that power of one. And I do that. I have four listed here, but I literally, since I made this slide, have thought of a fifth one that's probably just as important. And that is, as a believer, I say a little prayer as often as I can is, Lord, who is one person that I can show your love to today? Because, you know, whether or not you're a believer, that's something that really can impact that example of Jesus, who I think, you know, even non-believers believe is, is an amazing example, and it can put your focus on sharing that love with others. Number two is who is one teeny or partner. So again, this can be somebody that's, if you have a team that's on your team, it can be a sideline. It can be, you know, your, your mentor or your coach, whoever that is. Who is someone that I can encourage today? Because just like you're seeing the beautiful example of the abundance in this conference, if you want to build your business, you reap what you sow and being able to pour that, that encouragement and excitement like we're seeing in this room today, despite a hurricane literally hitting us as we speak. This is such a beautiful example of the encouragement that you can do for someone else that can bring you so much more than just growing your business. Also, who is one customer, just one customer today, because if you do this every day and you can even take Sundays off, I'm, I always, you know, I try my best to observe the Sabbath and you can, you know, connect with dozens of your customers. So if you do have a huge following, or if you're like me, I've got about 1300 or so of uh, customers and I have 4,200 teenies. So it can feel like a lot, right? And the way that I do that is like, who's just one person that I can check in with? And then the last one on here is who is a dream customer that I can intentionally connect with? And then the fifth one is going to be, who am I grateful for today? And this might be your kids. It might be like for me, a big one is Victoria. I'm so grateful for her allowing me the opportunity to make the connections with all of you. So who is it that you're grateful for? Because when you can focus on the gratitude, that is what's going to allow you again to kind of get through the hard things in life and in business. All right, so I'm not going to dive too much into this next one, which is implement automation setting technology, because again, Phil is going to bring the gold 
using um, AI specifically, and I already had that on my slide, so I was excited that he is gonna dive deeper on this. But I also use an app called Zapier to automate a lot of my processes through email and text marketing. And it's not as intimidating as you think. So if you don't feel like you're tech savvy, I'm telling you, it walks you through it in a very simple way. And this can be a game changer for implementing things like automations to make sure that you're serving the people that you are already connected to. And then lastly, I know Victoria has said she loves my emails. I use Flowdesk to create really simple, beautiful emails from templates that I can use over and over again. And that is something that I do consistently in my business to create conversations and connections. It's literally called Less Connect. And that this whole thing started with Victoria responding to one of those emails. So the power of doing that intentionally over time can create those relationships that will grow your business. All right, y'all ready for the next one? Content. So I know when you're thinking, okay, content, you spent your an entire year off of social media, what kind of content are we talking about? I mean, any kind of way that you are using your gifts, your personality, your skill set that you've learned to share value with the people that you're already connected to. So social media is an example of that, but there are so many other ways that you can do this. I, of course, have a podcast. I also have a YouTube channel, and I now have stepped back uh, pretty intentionally with social media, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. But it starts with the inspiration. So how many of you guys have heard of the be, do, have concept? Anybody in the chat? I can't always see it, but <laughs> you, guys can, you guys can share if this is something that you've heard of. But this is essentially in order to, you know, kind of be inspired in your content, you can look to someone whose life you want to emulate, someone that and is an example that's living the lifestyle that you want. And sometimes that might be someone who has a big following on social media. Not always, though, and I'll share an example of that. But what happens is you want to focus first on who you want to be and then emulate the actions that they are taking. What are they doing? Literally, like, what does their daily method of operation look like in order to have the results that they have had in their business. So you can also get this real backwards, y'all, and I'll show you a couple ways you can do that. So the first one is what, and I did not make this up. <laughs> so this is the victim, which is someone who feels like they don't have the time or they don't have the knowledge or they don't have the connections in order to do what it takes to be happy or to be successful or to build a big business, right? So they start from the place of scarcity rather than the place of abundance. And they're honestly never gonna get there with that mentality. On the opposite spectrum, and y'all, I have definitely fit into this category before, they're the workers and they're the ones that feel like they have to do all the things. And the more I do, then I'll be able to have all the things. And then after I have all those things, then I'll be happy and successful. And I'm here to tell you, I just got chills. That's not the case at all. So the magic answer is be a winner and focus first, who do you wanna be? And you can be inspired by people who have already reached whatever that milestone or already exemplifying that lifestyle that you want. And what did they do that you could also do? And then you can have the outcomes that they have had in their business. So um, am I doing okay on time? Sorry, Beverly. So, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah. So actually I went on a rabbit hole now that I'm back on social media, you guys can know like how that happens really easily. And I thought it was crazy that one of the rabbit holes I went down was a friend of a former teeny of mine. Um, it's her daughter that is a, a, a real estate agent down in like the 30A area. And I got sucked in, you guys, I'm not looking to buy, buy a home in, in 30A, but I was like, this girl is amazing. And she's, and look, she only has 930 followers, but she is like the, the content that she's putting out there. And I think she works with a team to help kind of produce some of this, but it's, it's amazing. And I was like, okay, if I was a realtor, I can tell you what I would be doing if I were looking to grow on social media. And so I've shared a couple of her uh, her things here. If you want to give her a follow and check her out, because I think she's learned from some mentors in her life. Um, also, I shared my mentor, my coach, and my upline, if you will, in network marketing, the fabulous Sarah Davies. And this is hilarious because she, you guys, she has more people on her team than she has Instagram followers. So this is going in the opposite direction for those of you guys who are like, Heather, tell me all the ways I can grow without social media or without being a slave to social media. And she posts like, I mean, I, actually, I can tell looking at these, the, the middle, like the second post that she did, that was from a year ago. 
a little over a year ago. And then she's posted one time on her feed in the last year. Okay. So, but guess what? She is a multiple six. She's actually uh, going to be a seven figure earner this year, which is really exciting. And she's done it without having to grow that following. So then it becomes, what is she doing? And she's doing a lot of the things that I'm telling you, because I learned from the best. So Sarah is another example. And then lastly, the number one seller. So I'm with a makeup company and this gal, she's super fun to follow. Her name's Mackenzie, but her Instagram handle freedom barbie and you guys she sells hundreds of thousands of dollars of makeup makeup 16 dollar tins in a month in one month at 40 percent commission so she makes even more than i do which is like and she did it by sharing her story of being a former private investigator she has now retired from that but she shares pi stories that she can legally share and she does her makeup at the same time and you guys, like, it's so simple, but she did it consistently. She committed to the process and it's something that you can do as well. So start with a tangible example. Okay. Um, the other thing that's really helped me as I stepped back into social media, cause I honestly kind of came back kicking and screaming. I was very comfortable with not doing it, especially considering I had grown, but I realized that by being on social media, I honestly can make a bigger impact on the lives of others and by, by sharing the content that's going to serve them best. So now that I'm back, my social media is not about me. It is about who I can serve through the wisdom, the knowledge, and the inspiration that I feel like the Lord gives me daily. And I just, I just run with that. So the way I did it for myself, um, which again was an inspiration in and of itself, is to do a, a mission statement specific to social media, though you could do this without social. And that's the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, the how, and then keeping a list on your phone of the things that you can post right now. And don't be scared, just put it out there, whatever that content is, okay? So I won't go too much into this, but you can screenshot it and hopefully it's a little bit um, you know, clear in and of itself, but this is what's gonna help you get really clear on what it is and how you're gonna leverage whatever platform that you choose to take on. One more example, this is mine. This is literally what I typed in my notes when I had that inspiration. And this is what I aim to do now that I am stepping back into posting on my Instagram account and then sharing that into my, my Facebook feed, okay? So this is something that you can do too. And this is what I was gonna work through on the breakout session, but I think we have other really cool things planned for you guys. So we can connect further on this um, anytime. I'm happy to connect with you guys. Okay, so next up is consistency. So this is the fourth, and these last couple will be quick. Hopefully we're still okay on time. But consistency is important no matter what you do. And I know you've heard that with social media, but this is more about creating a daily rhythm or a weekly rhythm or a monthly rhythm so that you can just marry that process and you can stop the overthink and the overwhelm and just do the things in the time that you have to that you know are going to be the actions that will move your business forward. Okay. So the implementation ideas of how that looks is I time block everything. And some of you guys let me know in the comments if this is something that you do for your business. And I think some of you probably do. Some of you guys probably fly by the seat of your pants, but it is a game changer because I do I use the iCal. It does tie into my Gmail. So if I get an invitation, it you know it automatically goes on there. But I color code just four little simple, um, you know, the pink is my business purple is i'm sorry the pink, pink, pinky purple's business blue is anything personal the green is a, a family one of my families that just goes to my daughter and then the brown is something that i share with my husband so that's the things that we need to be aware of in a day together and i do it on there and then i'm a little bit nerdy i also do it in my um i just started this because you can also do an audit essentially that oh the thing blur sorry y'all um let me see there we go um, so I know it's hard to see, but I use a highlighter and I'm tracking because I'm doing an audit of my time to see where I'm spending the time. And I can tell you that I work on average about 20 to 25 hours of my business, um, in a week. And I like that, that 20 hours is about my, my magic time that I'm going for. So you can track it and you can audit it and honor your own time just as much as you would honor someone else's. Okay. So next one is set kind of a, a monthly or a weekly kind of daily target that you want. And you could look at it, this as goal, but I also like to think of it as a game. So 
a lot of times I'll say to someone on my team, what is the game that you want to play this month? Because it can be really overwhelming to feel like you have to grow your Instagram following and, you know, build your team and also have a strong personal sales month. And so, you know, or launch a podcast or a YouTube channel or whatever that, whatever that looks like for you. So pick one primary project to focus on each month. And know that it might, again, this is a long game, you guys. It takes years of doing this, but focus on what seems like the biggest thing for you right in that season. Focus on that, write out tangible, you know, broken down goals that that can you can break that down, right? And then set weekly rhythms as well. And you can also do what I do, which is track daily habits around the things that you want to be intentional about doing each and every day, personally and in business. So that, my friends was the fourth C, which is consistency. So last but not least, and this conference is such a beautiful example of that, is collaboration. Who can you partner with to grow in your goals together? So I think it's so cool to hear Victoria's amazing story. And I know it had to be so inspiring for those of you guys who might just be getting started in your business and don't really know where to start. Well, guess what she did? She's like, I know some cool people. Some of them aren't even in this business, but let me see if I can get them all together in a room and, and put our heads together to share some, some content with you guys abundantly to help you grow. And what a brilliant example of collaboration. And I promise you, you all have people in your life you can do this with as well. So I'm not gonna go too much into this because some of them are obvious, but you can screenshot this again, the implementation ideas. It's everything from the, the referral opportunities that have been talked about to BNI that I mentioned, to social media collaborations, podcast interviews. One thing I do wanna share is you can, you don't have to start a podcast, you can, at, you know, pitch yourself to be interviewed on a podcast, share, have a little podcast button on your website that shares to that podcast. And that content is going to last forever. So you can still take advantage of the power of a platform like a podcast without having to add that on your plate. So collaboration, my friends, is where it's all about. And that is our fifth C. So, um, oh, oh, you know what? Oh, shoot. Oh, there it is. Okay. There it is. This slide is because I know I dropped a lot with you guys, but if you want to scan this QR code, 